Hey, Steve Mignogna here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking with a 1962 Chrysler Newport. Now, 1962, Chrysler sold a total of uh, 83,120 Newports. Of them, 40 or 54,813 were four-door sedans like this one. Now, the Newport was the entry-level Chrysler below the 300 Sport, the New Yorker, and the 300 H letter car, but it's something you see on all 61 and 62 Chrysler's Newport, New Yorker, 300H, and 300 Sport is this crazy trapezoidal grille opening and these canted headlights. Now again, 61 and 2 only on that bizarre Virgil Exner inspired canted headlight. Now check it out. These were first seen on 1957 Lincolns. So it wasn't like Chrysler was the only one in town doing this. But again, if this thing came down the road at you, it almost like a UFO flying up on your rear view mirror about to abduct you. But again, very crazy styling. And again, the Newport shared the same uh, grill opening with the New Yorker and the 300 Sport and 300H, but with different inserts. But again, just one of the craziest front styles in Detroit. Now here's the thing. These were so popular then that companies like Revell made models. This is a 1962 Chrysler Newport model kit. There's those crazy canted headlights, the trapezoidal grill, and it's kind of cool because Revell was in cahoots with Chrysler on these things and actually had portion bar suspension, unitized construction, and let's take a closer look at this thing. It's kind of neat. Now this model kit is probably a couple hundred bucks if you can find one unbuilt. I searched long and hard for this one. And it's kind of cool. Now this is a little messed up. The windshield post is busted off, but there's the uh, the front of this thing, the trapezoidal grill. And the crazy part is the base engine on these things was a 361 two barrel. So Revell even rendered the single exhaust system. Usually these things will have dual exhaust, something really sexy and exciting, but now nah, Revell was pretty faithful to the original with a single exhaust, which is what you got with the base 361 two barrel engine. And speaking of which, let's see if it's still here. And Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, keep in mind that the uh, Newport, the 361 two-barrel was the base engine. If you got the 300 Sport, the 383 two-barrel was the base engine. If you got the New Yorker, the 413 four-barrel was the base engine. And of course, the 300H got the 413 with dual quads. Speaking of which, this is Car Life Magazine right here, March 1962. And look at the stuff on the cover. Look at this 413 Dodge, 409 Chevy, Ford 406, and Chrysler 300H, the big muscle car boom was just getting started. And here it is right here. This is a 300H. And we can see here, you gotta remember the 300 Sport was new for 1962. It was basically a decontented letter car. And it begins with, when Chrysler decided to capitalize on the 300 series good name with a lower price line of cars, it wisely kept the letter series going too. Although the relationship of the two is a bit confusing. And it says here, Chrysler says when it finishes the alphabet, it will continue with double letters. The A, A will appear in 1982. Kind of funny, ha ha ha. But we do know that 1970 saw the Hearst 300H, and of course 2005, the C300 came back, so kind of a bit of a prediction. But here is the dual quad, that uh, picture to the top center left-hand page. That's the dual quad standard 413 engine. Of course, the long run was certainly possible in the 300H. But this one here, again, is the 361 two-barrel. Now keep in mind, no six-cylinders in Newports. In fact, no Chrysler could be had with a six-cylinder. Just too heavy, too big. In fact, the uh, 318 Poly was also not available in any Chrysler. So there was strictly wedge, big block engine. Again, this one here being the 361 with the two-barrel Stromberg carburetor right there. Um, the 413 four-barrel was $162 more. And yes, that could have been had in this. Again, it was a single four-barrel, basically the New Yorker engine that could have been had right here. Now, this one's not an air conditioning car, just got the heater. Single pot master cylinder, manual brakes. An interesting detail on this one. And uh, this one is also a power steering car. Here's the box here. Kind of a weird deal on these things. The box is integral with the steering column. But again, sort of an entry level car. The Chrysler Newport, this one right here, four door uh, sedan. Ah! So I guess what we'll do, let's. Um, before we do that, by the way, one interesting thing, of course, is the bolt-on wheels, you know, with, with nuts and studs and left-hand lug nuts. There it is right there. And you got to remember, back in 54, Chrysler used bolts to secure the wheels. They went to studs in 55 or thereabouts. And again, left-hand lug nuts through 1970, 71. But uh, Shane, if you want, hop in the, the left rear. I'll jump in the front and we'll have a look inside this space-age Chrysler. Ugh. 
chances are on 60 through 62 Chrysler's is this, the instrument panel, this blown plastic globe is called the Astrodome, 120 mile an hour speedometer, 150 on 300s, but interesting, sort of like a, a stadium seating effect with the temperature, oil pressure, and all the gauges inside this plastic dome, which close at night. Now, if you look at that, this dome comes out really far. The steering column is really short. So on this one here, we have the optional 727 torque flight with the push buttons right here. That was an extra 227 bucks. But on a base Newport, the three-speed manual, where's the shifter going to go on this thing? There's no room for a shifter. So on these cars, the three-speed would be floor mounted like a Corvette. Kind of weird. I'm sure Chrysler didn't really want to do things that way. But if you ever see a 60, 61 or 62 Chrysler with a three-speed manual, the shifter is going to be on the floor, not on the column. So this one has the rib raker rear view mirror, this thing right here, which uh, sort of Ralph Nader and the safety uh, people would freak out because if you had a car crash, you went through the windshield, well, you'd probably only lose half your ribs on this thing as you made it through the car. It has the golden tone radio, 93 bucks, kind of cool golden tone, push buttons. And again, the push button design matches that of the air conditioning unit and the heater. And again, golden tone right there, $93 well spent. I like to look inside the glove compartments and see what we find. This is the Newport. Let's look inside here and see what's in the box. Ooh, okay. Here's the fuse box, by the way, a novel thing. First seen, I think, in 1960. Uh, fuses instead of circuit breakers and fusible links. Okay, let's look inside here, see what treasures await. Okay, here's some keys. And these keys are perhaps from this car, probably are from Ace Hardware and from an 82 Pontiac. Okay, because these aren't from this car. That might explain this hubcap from a full-size Pontiac right here. <laughs> kind of weird. So again, junkyards, anything goes. Okay, we have here, oh, lottery tickets. The lottery this year from uh, August 17th, 1989. You got to wonder if that's a winner. Maybe more lottery tickets, more lottery tickets. The numbers, remember this, the numbers game in Massachusetts. And the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, the numbers. Oh, registration, here we go. Here's the registration, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The car was owned by Cynthia Lashaway, Amherst, Massachusetts, 40 Harlow Drive. I'm sure that Google user GP will find out exactly where she lives. I hope you do. And again, Chrysler Newport sedan, blue with white. So uh, insured with Hampshire Insurance. And again, 1988, September 26, 1988 is when this car was uh, initially registered. So again, what's in the box? Finally, oh, pack of, pack of matches from Paysaver. Remember the Paysaver catalog? Right inside of here, Lower Westfield, or Holyoke Mall, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, the bits and pieces inside of these things are interesting. A couple of some ostriches, is, 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 animals of the world, kind of cool. Yeah, a little jackal, a little jackal right there. Anyway, so this is the inside of the 62 Chrysler Newport four-door sedan. And an interesting thing is that Chrysler tried to add a sporting flair by having the driver's side of the front bench seat raised up, kind of like it was the cockpit, the control area. But we all knew this is basically Chrysler's heavy lifter. This is the car that accounted for 65% of all Chrysler sales in 1962. Newport, just like this thing right here. So that's the story of uh, 1962 and the very end of Virgil Exner's uh, styling influence. The canted headlights to be gone for 63, a whole different design of car. Uh, now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steam Mag's YouTube channel and uh, stick around back tomorrow with more from Burson Auto Wrestling.